Okay, I think we can uh, start again. So I've listed here these five uh, phenomena uh, we discussed about initially. So uh, I uh, just to repeat, reverse bias uh, generation may be a non-ideal uh, effect to consider. Junction breakdown, uh, we've done generation, uh, forward bias, combination, very early on, a small voltages, we've done that. Uh, next one, high level injection. So this happens um, toward when the voltage is approaching VBI. So high level injection is the situation, represents the situation where uh, when uh, the amount of minority carriers that we are injecting into a piece of semiconductor is such that the total number of uh, density of, semi of minority carriers would be above the density of the majority carriers initially present at the thermodynamic equilibrium. Uh, so you, you understand that you know, this is uh, a quite a, a big stress for the, for the semiconductor. And so to explain uh, what to expect in this situation, again, we are not doing the theory, we are not, uh, you know, really qualitatively trying to understand what these are. So I prepared this, uh, this uh, diagram here, which is better to switch off some light to see it, um, that tries to explain uh, what happens when uh, uh, the non-equilibrium situation is such that we are entering high-level injection conditions. Uh, so this is the uh, carrier density, the plot of the carrier densities uh, in our PN junction, uh, the, the one that basically is seen also in the previous diagram, okay? In forward bias, but uh, the, as you can see, the density, it's out of equilibrium, the, but the density of the minority carriers is well below the density of the majority carriers each, each side. Now, as we try now to, in, as we increase the bias, and so more and more carriers move from one side to the other, and so there is more current flowing, at the same time, remember that the, the depletion width will, will decrease. So, in an attempt to represent this situation, you know, graphically, uh, we could represent it this way. So we can see that the, the minority carrier density now that is represented by this, this curve, uh, for the holes at least, is now very close to the actual density of the majority carriers on the end side, for example. Same story probably on this side, but especially on the end side is the problem. Remember, we are dealing with P plus N. So this is uh, the, the density of the majority carriers here is higher than here as it is represented also. So really, it is the density of holes in the end side that will quickly reach or go even above the density of the majority carriers already there. So what we are doing really, just to qualitatively, you know, to try to understand this, is we are asking the system to deal with an enormous amount of minority carriers, way more than this end side could ever think of dealing with. Okay, in a way, uh, we could uh, uh, simplistically say that we are, the system can cope with so many uh, minority carriers. And effectively, effectively, it can't uh, follow. We are asking the system to follow, to provide many, many more carriers that it could. So effectively, it can't cope and follow properly the Shockley equation. 
so it has to deviate, it will provide less current. And if you do the, the calculations, uh, the, I think I have it here, these are, these are main also, you, you'll get it. Um, uh, the, the behavior is, again, E to the EV over 2KT. Okay, so uh, in, in this high level injection situation, which, what is this thing? Sorry. Uh, so again, in this, you see that here we start deviating from the shock equation. So the slope again will be similar to this if, if this part was going with a, a, a two uh, uh, in the in the denominator of the component, uh, uh, something similar would happen here. So this is very brief, briefly the high level injection situation, and finally, if we move, to voltages well above now VBI, if you remember last week we by drawing uh, you know qualitatively. The, the energy diagram of this, of this situation, we ended up saying all the carriers will be drifting at that time, at the, in that situation. And uh, effectively, we said in this situation, the semiconductor, the voltage is so large, the current so big, that effectively the, the current flowing is governed by Ohm's law. It's the resistance of this piece of semiconductor that is governing how much current is flowing. And this is also pointed out by the fact that everything is drifting. All the carriers are simply drifting. So we should expect that at high voltages, high currents, the uh, IV characteristic of a PN junction will eventually become Ohm's law. So linear. Okay. And that's why on that log plot that we had uh, seen here, this curved behavior is actually the effect of a linear behavior. If you try to plot on a log linear uh, uh, plot, a linear behavior, it, it turns out like that. Okay. Uh, um, but effectively, uh, what uh, 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 it means is that the, eventually the IV characteristic will end up being, uh, being linear. So if this is IV, starts you know, initially exponential, but eventually will be linear. Okay, and uh, and um, and this is the effect of what we call the series resistance of the semiconductor, um, which means it's it's effectively the resistance of that piece of material. Um, so on this on this plot, BBI would be somewhere here, and um, so my real PN junction, if I wanted to account for the presence of this series resistance could be modeled with an ideal Shockley diode, Shockley junction, but with a resistor in series. And effectively, the, the result is that I is proportional to E This ex uh, explains that, uh, that part, that eventually the, the characteristic will become, will become linear. Oh, this uh, series resistance is uh, generally very, very small, of the order of few ohms. <clears throat> 
Okay, uh, so we've discussed briefly high level injection and series resistance, what they, what they mean. The last part, uh, the last uh, non-ideal phenomenon I wanted to discuss is junction breakdown. This really, again, we will do it very quali qualitatively. And uh, actually, uh, I wanted to go a bit more in detail into this qualitative approach, but I don't want to do it here because I want to discuss some other things. So I'll do it in the post-lecture video. I just want to say on, uh, on, the, uh, on the junction breakdown bit, a uh, few couple of things. So junction breakdown can be caused by three main uh, phenomena. One is avalanche. Remember, this happens only at reverse bias. Eh? Uh, avalanche multiplication. Um, tunneling and thermal instabilities. So I will briefly go through this later in the, in the police lecture video. But what um, the main result of this phenomenon, regardless of the mechanism, behind junction breakdown is what is junction breakdown. So what, what happens in junction breakdown is that if this was the Shockley, let's say, uh, IV characteristic, uh, uh, in reality, if uh, the reverse bias is large enough at a certain point, oops, this will become like that. So there is a uh, a, a breakdown voltage at which uh, basically the, the voltage across the, the junction remains effectively nearly constant around that voltage. It depends on the mechanism. And then uh, it can draw, uh, the, the, the junction in that condition is capable of, um, uh, of letting through and nearly you want. That's why it has this straight shape. Uh, so there are diodes that they are sp where uh, the physics behind this phenomena is is uh, very well uh, um, um, engineered, let's say, in such a way to create diodes with a very precise and very constant breakdown voltage, and these are called Zener di Zener diodes. And so, and this is called the Zener voltage. And this is effectively a straight line down. And these are very important in, uh, because what, what they do is, uh, the, the voltage is fixed and any current can go through. They behave much like what we called an ideal voltage supply. What's the, what's the IV characteristic of an ideal voltage supply? We've seen this, uh, at the very, very, very beginning, an ideal voltage supply would, would have, well, if this is V1, would have this characteristic. Always gives a voltage V1, but can provide any current you like. And this is the same, but in the negative side. Vz is negative and can provide any current you like. So it's used in uh, uh, stabilized uh, power supplies, which we will do probably next week. Okay. Uh, uh, move on. So, we now know, let's say, everything of the uh, IV characteristic of the pin junction. And let's see how we use it in real terms. Real terms. In, in practical scenarios now. 
don't get too excited because we still have some work to do. Uh, so probably what I'll do is I will put my notes on uh, because I want you to pay attention and anyway you'll get the notes uh, so we can do this more efficiently rather than filling this board up. So I'll do it here. Okay, so we've seen up to now, uh, we've discussed several ways of how someone could deal with a nonlinear circuit. Uh, we've seen one, one import, an important one that we will use also for the BJT is the small signal method. We've seen that um, uh, in chapter one, we've seen that again applied to the PN junction just last week. I think I had uh, I discussed that in the, in the post lecture video. Uh, there is another one which we we mentioned, but we haven't discussed yet at all, and this the piecewise linear equivalent circuits. So this is a very powerful technique, simple and probably in some some in some cases a bit too crude, but works very well. And the idea is very simple: is that you take your nonlinear circuit or a component, for example and you linearize it in a piecewise fashion, region by region. And uh, you represent each one of these regions that have been linearized with some analytical formula. And then you try also to translate bit by bit that uh, region into a, an equivalent circuit using only linear components that are uh, uh, those that we know, resistors, generators, uh, and so on. So here I have an example. So imagine that you have that you have uh, this nonlinear component. Okay. So one, uh, I would like to first step is to linearize it somehow. So I break it into regions. First linearization, second linearization, and then I represent it in an analytical form. Second step. So for V bigger than zero, so in this region, I have this straight line. I have put there the equation of a straight line. A plus B times V. This is the slope, A is the intercept here. And same for the other part. V is smaller than zero, so on this side, A plus C, V. Different slope, same intercept. <clears throat> Where B and C, remember, any slope on an IV plot is the inverse of a resistance. So I keep in my head that B is 1 over some resistance, RB, that I've called RB. Same for C. Well, A, as it is there, uh, is a constant, is a constant current. So it's a constant current generator. So I already, uh, I'm already building in my head the components that will be needed to make the equivalent circuit. And so the third step would be use linear components, generators, current generators, voltage generator, resistor, and the ideal switch. Remember the ideal switch we talked previously? Huh? The diode off in this side, the diode on there. Or oh, the power of this, uh, this approach as compared to the small signal method. So remember, the small signal method applies well around a specific point of operation of our component, the quiescent point, we called it. We linearize locally the, the, the um, operation of that component. So it's, it's valid in basically in AC, but for small signals. While this approach is valid no matter what, AC, DC, big, small, you can apply whatever you want here. 
So that's kind of the power of this approach. Um, so before we move into, because in the end I want to use this to linearize the the uh, um, the um, pn junction characteristic. Okay. So, but before we go there, let me show you six, I think six simple applications of this concept. I will make some uh, simple circuits so that we start learning how this translate into the corresponding IV plot and the corresponding piecewise linear form of the equations related to that. So, because we need to learn to do that. Circuit, equivalent circuit, IV plot, uh, uh, um, analytical uh, formulas. So I have here, unfortunately, has been badly divided into the first simple case of a resistor with our ideal switch connected like that. And so uh, I'm assuming that this is the voltage across measured in this way. The current is taken positively when it goes that way. <clears throat> so based on the, on the uh, definition of this ideal switch, the IV plot of this uh, component, this circuit, is actually the one that I've, I've, I've put there. So when V, and, and these are the corresponding formulas. So the current is zero when V is negative, because the diode is off. So it's an open circuit, nothing can go through. When instead uh, V is positive, this is a short circuit. So there is like, a, like nothing here, just a, 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 a short circuit. And so this is just a, a resistor effectively. And so you have that bit that is, uh, you know, the, the uh, related to, the slope is related to one over R. And so I is V over R. Okay, I put here the, how, you demonstrate that if you wanted to, to, to do the demonstration. Uh, and the way you go in the demonstration, let, let's do it at least once. You will see that in the R circuit, the approach is if, uh, always the same. So, uh, we need to remember our, uh, this switch, how it works. When, the, when it is on, it's a short circuit. When it is off, so in the, this happens when the voltage across it is positive. You see that I always put plus and minus just to remind us how the voltage is taken across this uh, device. And when the diode is off, it's an open circuit. And this means that the voltage across is, is negative. Now, so let, let's try to do it at least once, the, the, the demonstration. So let's demonstrate uh, that if I analyze this circuit, I get, I can demonstrate that these are the final equations you should get. <coughs> okay? So let us assume that this diode is on. So the diode is on means that according to the operation of this uh, device, means that the voltage is zero across because it's a short, and the current is positive. So the current has to flow like that through it. So ID, the current through the diode, which also happens to be also equal to I, ID, which is equal to I, has to be bigger than zero. By definition, because this is the way that uh, this uh, uh, switch is defined. So, um, but I, so this is now a short, and so we have only R. So the current I is V over R. So V over R to be positive must be V positive. So we just demonstrated the first part of this uh, uh, um, analytical formula here. I equal V over R. That was the same assumption. Let's assume now that D is off. When D is off, this is an open circuit. 
open circuit means that the cut is definitely ID is definitely zero. The potential across it can be any potential negative. Make sure it is it is off. So but if ID also is I so this have to because this is off. So at this point use KDL, uh, it may sound as an overall here, but just I'm trying to follow the rules. So uh, KDL on this circuit, I have a, I have a component uh, uh, that has a VD across. So uh, applying KDL means V equal R V equal R time I plus VD. Uh, because we assume that I, we assume, we assume that D is off, which means that I is zero, I is zero, I is like that is actually equal to VD. Must be negative, and so V must be negative. And so we just demonstrated the second part, that means that when V is negative, the current is zero. Okay, so all the demonstrations, uh, I won't go through the demonstrations again. This is enough to show you the approach, the methodology. Okay, so let's see the other circuits which are interesting. So when the diode is pointing this way, that's what really is, is, is now we are going to see. That's when we swap it. When it's pointing that way, we see there is only on this side, on the positive voltage side, and here, nothing. The current is zero. Now we swap it. So we swap it around, and we see the resistor for the voltages. Now we cut off. Huh? So you can you can have a look uh, at the demonstration. Later on, and uh, there are the also the formulas. You know how analytically represent that. Uh, another circuit now. Let's put inside a, a voltage meter. So I have this circuit now. So this, you see what it's this like the first circuit, but now there is this added. So what this does is to shift the point where uh, uh, these two behaviors make effectively. And uh, obviously, uh, there are changes to do also in the actual total current, obviously. So here is, uh, again, the demonstration. It follows exactly what we've done, uh, we've done above. We always use KVL, you know, uh, very simple things. The, the key point is always to start from the diode. When the diode is on, let us assume the diode is on, blah, 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 blah. And, and remember, the other thing is to strictly follow the definition of that diode. Remember, when the diode is on, means that VD is zero because it's a short, and the current through it has to be positive. Positive, I mean, going like that. It depends on how it is uh, directed, whether it is positive or negative. And then when the diode is off, the current is definitely zero through it because it's an open circuit. Voltage across it can be negative in general. It has to be negative. So if you stick to this, you can demonstrate all uh, these nice things we are uh, discussing. Uh, here is what happens when you swap the previous diode, keep everything else the same, but just swapping the direction of the diode. And so, uh, uh, as we said previously, now you see the resistor on this side of V1 and uh, zero on that one. What I'm showing you may seem, you know, kind of maybe trivial, I don't know. But uh, it's extremely powerful, as we will see in a moment. So let's put instead a, a, a current generator. So when we discussed uh, uh, Thevenin and Norton, we've seen that uh, uh, gener oh, voltage generators generally take resistors in, in series. And the equivalent situation would be that of a current generator with the resistor in parallel. Okay, So this shouldn't be... Um, uh, surprising you, okay, this kind of connection. It comes from even 
simply the what we've already seen between Tevin and Norton. So let us add a dispute to the circuit. What would be the IV, IV characteristic here of this type of uh, uh, configuration? Uh, so what, what you can see is that you get, again, the, the, the resistor behavior on this side when the voltage is negative. And uh, you see, when the voltage is positive, you don't get anything. I mean, the voltage can be at maximum zero because when D is on, this is a short. So at maximum, V can be zero. And can ca any current can go through above this value. So uh, it's kind of a, a tricky one to see. Uh, and this is the, um, the analytical expression of what is, what is happening. And again, here you, you can see the, the, the demonstration. <clears throat> but as you can see, I mean, I keep stressing it. All the demonstrations of these things, and if you ever are asked of demonstrating that uh, something is uh, the equivalent circuit of something, you start always with the diode, always with the with the with the um, and uh, this is the the equivalent of the previous one with this diode swapped in the in its its direction. Okay. So all these two come finally to the to our PN junction, which is uh, 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 this is the the, um, the our uh, I'm obviously in my mind uh, uh, we will keep um, the the Shockley uh, IV characteristic, which is which is this one here, with uh, you know very small current in reverse bias and exponentially growing uh, um, the current in forward bias. And, uh, and uh, this is, remember, the symbol of our uh, ideal PN junction, which we mean, by, by that we mean the Shockley equation. Um, so first very crude and uh, rudimental approach is to substitute the, the shock equation uh, with uh, a, a, a two zone. I, these are my own uh, terminology I've invented it this morning. So, you know, take it as it is, you know, two zone, no resistive. So two zone, I mean, uh, there are the, the, uh, the plane is divided into two regions and is non-resistive. So there are no resistors in this model. So when V is smaller than VBI, no current. When V is bigger than VBI, well, V can't be bigger than VBI, it can be V equal to VBI, and then you can, any current can flow through. That's my, my equivalence model of the diode. And so this is the analytical uh, expression. Uh, it's, it's obviously super simple, but uh, what I'll show you here is a, a sequence of more and more complex models that you should, uh, you know, it's good to keep them in mind. Someone, when you, when you deal with a circuit, you start with the simplest one just to get the grasp of what could be happening. And then depending on uh, the kind of uh, uh, um, result, resolution maybe you want in your result, you apply one or uh, the other, more, more uh, advanced or less. So this is the two zone, no resistive. And uh, the equivalent circuit in this case is this one here. Sorry, let me bring up the formulas. Oh, they don't fit. Just. So, uh, when the diode DF forward is on, uh, uh, or V is bigger than VBI, it can't be, it can't be, it should be equal to VBI. Uh, the current can be bigger than zero, while if V is smaller than VBI, the current is zero. And so this, a two-zone uh, uh, um, um, model always has at least one, one diode, so that's, that's our diode. And it must have, in this case, as we learned, because we have VBI, so in the previous examples I've shown you, uh, we understand that if you want to shift things horizontally, you need a generator. And that's our generator. 
no resistors because that was our choice to have no resistors in. Okay, so remember the reason I've shown you those six uh, uh, characteristic examples previously is to understand uh, uh, what resistors does, what swapping the direction of the diode does, what the presence of a po potential voltage source does. So it moves the, the, the characteristic horizontally. The, the presence of a current source moves it vertically. And so that's why now we will try to apply these things to the PN junction. So next, uh, a bit more complex, is the two zone, but with resistors now. So again, I take VBI as my uh, point of separation between the two zones, straight line with a slope 1 over RF, which is our, the forward resistance of the junction. And then here a very shallow, a very quite nearly flat now uh, line with a slope 1 over R, R, R. R, R is the resistance of the junction in reverse mode. Uh, remember that in, uh, in uh, the junction in, in reverse mode is you know, very little conductive, you know, very little current. So really, RR is extremely bigger than RF. For example, RR could be 10 to the 10 ohm, while RF forward would be maybe 10 ohm. Okay, we are talking of this kind of difference. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, we know uh, how the straight line is represented here. We, we've, uh, we've done it previously in our models. There is another straight line here. This is something we've never seen before in our six uh, example models. Generally, the example models, if you remember, are you know, a, a certain behavior and then maybe zero here or the opposite. A certain behavior, then zero on the other side. So this has two behaviors. This is telling us these are two branches. One branch with a diode, represent, with an ideal switch representing that, and one for that. And so here is the representation of the actual, these behaviors, these straight lines. And if you translate them into, based also on what we've seen in the examples, you end up with something like that. So this is the part that relates to the forward bit. While this one here with the diode reversed is the one that relates to the, to the reverse part. You see this one has uh, RR, the reverse resistor and the forward resistor. Uh, here I'm obviously making a heavy use of those examples. Eh? Uh, I'm, I'm not making it out of my, you know, uh, imagination. You see, for the reverse bias bit, we have a straight line that goes like that. And so I'm using this approach to create the bit that uh, recreates the reverse bias. For the forward bias, we have a straight line that goes like that. And so I'm using this type of uh, circuit to um, represent that um, uh, part of the model. So overall, the two-zone model with resistances could be represented in this way. Actually, so again, here the demonstration, uh, which is fairly straightforward. Uh, oh, here, uh, just uh, uh, um, uh, an interesting note. Here we have, this is the only situation that we have encountered um, up until now, where you have two diodes, the reverse and the forward. So in this case, where you have two diodes, what you could do to, to analyze this, so if you wanted to demonstrate Let's demonstrate that this circuit can be represented analytically by 
the formula that was uh, up there. So uh, what you do is, uh, you could do is um, uh, write the KVL, so King, uh, Kirchhoff voltage law, uh, for, there are two branches, so you could write Kirchhoff voltage law for the first branch and for the second branch, which are these written here, taking into account properly, you know, the, the polarity of the diode, and, uh, and then and you end up, uh, you can uh, um, ex explicitly write from this V of VDF for the forward diode and VDR for the reverse diode uh, in function of the, everything else. In, in these uh, formulas, you will have also the currents. So IF in the forward branch and IR in the reverse branch. And uh, what is easy to do at this point is, let's imagine that uh, IF is zero or IR is zero, which means that the diodes are off. So these KVL conditions turn into something that is only related to voltages now. And because the diode is off, you should say that VDF must be negative, for example. This immediately turns into a relation that relates to the voltage, the external voltage, that is what you need for the, uh, uh, you see, you, you need something that in this, when you go into this, to these analytical formulas to define the region, you need to say V must be smaller than this. So you need this V. And, and that's what you are able to identify by using this step you are able to say that when DF is off, V must be smaller than VBI. And so this means implicitly that if DF is on, V must be bigger than VBI. And similarly for the other diode. So this approach is interesting in this, in this sense. It allows you to define for which value of the input voltage that specific diode is on or off. And this then allows you to do the uh, uh, complete analysis. Um, so re regarding this model here, we, sh we haven't used yet the fact that this resistor is huge as compared to that, to the forward one. Uh, because we can use that to actually simplify this circuit. Indeed, we can, we can demonstrate that this circuit can actually be simplified to that. We can remove the second diode and the, and the, and the power supply that was there and use something like that. Actually, there is a type here. This is the VBI. And this is because, in principle, when this diode is on, someone could say, when this diode is on, current could flow here, but also here. But the thing is, the current flowing here is negligible, because this is huge. This resistor is very small. So any current will flow here, effectively. So it's an acceptable approximation. As we said, the difference between these two it can be six, seven, eight orders of magnitude. So, um, so in this specific case, if you do the analysis, uh, the, the um, analytical formulas relating uh, uh, to the to the volt between current and voltage are uh, those here. So. Uh, if you notice, what has happened is that this part is simpler, the part related to um, the reverse bias. And um, what has also changed is that, for, still for the reverse bias part, 
we I haven't stressed it previously, but if you look close, if you look closely, it's a minor thing, but worth noticing. The previous model, the two zone, the more precise, let's say, uh, the, the 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 red curve starts from VBI from this point and goes negative. It's always negative, as you can see. It's always below uh, the the horizontal axis. Bizarrely, this means that when V0, the current is negative, will be generally very small anyway, but is negative, which is kind of weird. So uh, in a way, with the other model, the, the, this, the simplified two zone, let's call it, uh, the, this red curve actually goes through the zero, zero of the graph. Uh, there is some something weird happening actually now on VBI, <laughs> uh, but again, it's 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 this is whatever relates to the reverse bias, whatever I've done is always exaggerated. You know, these lines are extremely uh, uh, very close to be actual flat, um, so a reasonable approximations. Everything I've done, and finally the third one which is also the most accurate, is the free zone, uh, uh, which in a way is kind of more uh, uh, intuit in intuitive. So <clears throat> you have a behavior for V above VBI, which is the straight line like that. Between zero and VBI, let's say zero current, nothing. And then for V uh, negative, we have uh, the straight line that describes the reverse uh, um, situation. And uh, so here the analytical expression breaks up in three parts. So this one is the one that relates to the, to the uh, forward. Uh, and th th then in this part I is zero, when V is between zero and VBI. And then uh, in the other part, when V is over, V over RR is the current. Um, so as I said, everything can be easily uh, 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 understood using the six examples I started with. And, uh, and finally, this is the representation of the three zone model. As you can see, as compared to the two zone model, what is missing is VBI here. Okay and the demonstration there. <clears throat> so, and to conclude this part, I had uh, also included here uh, a, a three-zone model based on the two-zone we saw previously. Uh, three-zone now, because I need to add also the Zener part, uh, for the Zener diode. And so we have uh, this part, straight line, well, nearly straight, representing the reverse uh, part, and then the Zener um, uh, region. Uh, I've assumed here that there is a certain slope, uh, 1 over Rz. Rz will be extremely small, just a few ohms anyway. And this is the analytical expression. And uh, I, uh, the equivalent circuit is this one here. Oh, the Zener diode is represented uh, with this with this um, special. So what do these models represent is if you ever have a circuit that you want to solve where there is a diode inside, a PN junction or a Zener uh, uh, PN junction in, uh, you can replace that with that model, and the system is now no, uh, is non non-linear anymore. It becomes linear. Okay, it may look a bit more complex, of course, depends on the model you use. Uh, generally, my suggestion is start with the simple one, the very crude, non-resistive one, which is really the you know just to get the grasp or what the diode is doing, the PN junction is doing. And then you can compl complicate it. it generally, yeah, as a general approach. Okay, uh, we probably don't have time. 
So uh, after, uh, uh, after this was actually application. So I wanted to show you how we use the, the diode practically. And uh, the idea was to show you how with, a, with one diode and one capacitor, you can actually do an AC-DC adapter to have a voltage stabilizer. So very, very you know, simple uh, thing. So I'll show you this in the post-lecture video later. Uh, today. So I'll see you next, tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow.